Hi there. Welcome to this very special Believe Q&A special live stream call as part of the seminar that we've been running all week. I'm Jacqueline Conway. I've been your host for the week. And I somehow managed to pin down Mr. Dave Conway, who's been tough to get this week. I will say that. So thanks for being here, Dave. Excited to hear. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, you grace us with your presence. So we're pretty jazzed about it. And I, if there's any Parks and Rec fans in the house, so I'm a big Parks and Rec fan, and I don't know if anyone knows like Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt, the two characters in that movie or in that show, but I'm pretty sure Ben Wyatt falls in love with Leslie when she does this speech when she has the flu, and Dave has had the flu all week, and so I would say I already loved Dave before, but I think I love you more now because that's not easy to deliver what you've delivered whilst dealing with the flu. It's commitment to belief, you know, commitment to growing. Yeah, no doubt. So this is a Q&A call. So we will have the chats open. I'll be watching to see if anybody has any questions for Dave from Believe. I've actually got some questions that came through in the chat from the live sessions over the week. So there's a couple I'll ask Dave. I have my own questions as well prepared because uh, there's some deep concepts that we go into in this event as, as light as we like to keep it and as much fun as we like to have like some pretty deep material so there's lots to discuss there's lots to think about and there's lots to to continue to reflect on and work through as you go on past this week so i think it's going to be a really good call actually this call was probably my favorite one from the last belief like i loved all the calls but this one in particular i thought um the q a is always really good you can really get into the nitty-gritty i think hey dave Oh yeah, hundred percent. You uh, you're saying that the Q and A is your favorite call? Yeah, I loved the Q and A in the last one. Was... Why? Uh, insightful, interesting. Some, like I say, you can just go a little bit deeper. Like you know, we just listen to you talk, but sometimes you have to like take one idea and just go a little bit, a few layers lower to really get the seed. The mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, the deeper I've gone, the more freer I become. There you go. So let's get into it. So welcome to those that are on. Thanks for being here. So um, the event is called Believe. And this the, the replay will also be in the group too, in case you're, you're catching the replay. The event is called Believe. And what do you want people to believe in exactly? What does like it what's mean? the primary message? Yeah, exactly. What's the primary message of this week? Uh, I want people to believe in the power of their own mind. That they have a mind and that that mind hooks them up into universal intelligence. And with that relationship that you can have anything you want. So I, I want to help people believe and understand more in the power of their own mind to, to produce the life that they want. How has belief in your own mind helped you create your life? This changed everything. So thoughts are constantly moving in and out of the mind at all, all times. They, I think it was a, uh, some researchers at MIT claimed that there was 76,000 thoughts a day would rip through, you know, this gray matter up here. And uh, however, that doesn't mean that, you know, 76,000 thoughts uh, are connected to belief. It's not until a thought is connected to belief or a goal is connected to belief. Um, will there be any change? So to have the to have the idea alone, to just have the goal alone isn't enough. You have to believe it. And I shared a story mm -hmm. on session four today about a gentleman that's worked with us and it took him nine months to achieve his goal, but it took him seven months to believe it. So you acquire the belief. So once you have the idea, the next phase is to acquire the belief. So what you're saying is to become a goal achiever, we need to really just become a believer. Yeah, you got to believe, man. Like, mm -hmm. There must be a risk in believing because so many people just don't do it. You know, beliefs are the most common things in the world and belief is the least common. Yeah. Belief in yourself, really. That's yeah. the message. Belief in yourself, belief in your mind. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you've already answered this, but why is that message so important to you? It changed my life. So for many, many years, I... Uh, was around this information, but I don't think I truly ever believed it because belief is unconscious. Belief is a decision. And until you realize the power and the role that it plays in your life that you have to choose all in. 
and you have to ban yourself. So we have a faculty of the mind called the reason and our reasoning faculty, I find it, what it does is it, it removes belief from our life. We have to just let ourselves go to that place, let ourselves dream bigger, let ourselves start to believe in a world, an opulent world, a world that we do get to have what we want, a world that we can live how we want, a world that you know success is, our, is the natural order of things. And I remember when I made that decision, I'm just going to let myself believe. And at the time, I, I, I didn't have a lot of belief in uh, a lot of these principles because I'd never truly experienced them all that much. Mm -hmm. But I got mentored by a man and many of you be familiar with him, Bob Proctor. And I got mentored by him. And what I did was I borrowed his belief. So what I did was I abandoned my own belief system and I just started to adopt his. So any of my beliefs that were restrictive and confining and uh, would lead to, you know, the brainstorm, I began to abandon those beliefs and I just started to say yes and to start to choose all in. And as I started to do that, a new energy field started to flow into my mind and then into my life. And my life actually started to change uh, very quick. Yeah, totally. I was there to watch it change. It did change very quick. And what you're saying is really important because to all the skeptics out there, I'm a former reformed skeptic myself because I'd sit at the seminars and I'd just be like, they keep saying to me, like, just, you know, it's your paradigms, Jack, it's your paradigms. <laughs> like, like they must have said paradigm like 50 times. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I have a paradigm. Like it, it just didn't, I just felt like it all felt very surface level. It felt like it was really, I hadn't truly integrated what they were saying to me and understood it, which is where yeah. the study and the mentorship really is comes in and makes it important. But <clears throat> I was a skeptic because so, you know, we always take so much of what's happening just from our foots around us physically or like from face value. And we ignore all of the invisible of our life. And most of our life is invisible. I've heard you say that before, too. That so much of this is is happening beneath the surface. And I think that's where the skepticism comes in. It's because we can't see it. We can't necessarily, you know, stick a pin in it and hang it on the wall when we talk about for affirmations and what's actually happening in our brains when we affirm things. You know, there's science that says when we affirm new ideas, we actually create new neural pathways in our brains. And then our brains are able to actually think different. Literally, they function differently. Like mechanically, they function differently when we start to affirm things. But we as humans, we always need that proof, right? We always like that proof. And so this belief piece is so important because you have to operate with faith and there can't always be proof of of what you want being within grasp. You said today that you should never set a goal that could be, be happening in your current world. Basically, you're saying your current world needs to crumble away and a new world needs to be built or a new person, a new identity needs to be built to create that. So to yeah. all the skeptics out there, Dave, before I get off the pulpit, what would you say to all the skeptics that need the proof? I think there's a story about them in the Bible. I think it's, it was Doubting Thomas. You know, I think that uh, Jesus came back and he had to, you know, stick his stick his finger in the in the hole to believe. I don't know uh, why some people still operate with that philosophy or that belief system when it's pretty obvious that we become what we think about, that it's that it's fairly logical. And, and one of our missions here at Comic Consulting is to is to make manifestation logical. And the purpose of a goal is to grow. So the further out you can take your goals, like right now I'm reading this book. Um, I just like to revisit the magic of thinking big. And you got to think bigger. And the crazy thing is you have to give yourself permission to think bigger. Because most of us are hardwired in. I know I was. We're hardwired to just say, can it be done? What, what proof do we have? We've proved it so many times as a as a as a race as as mankind that we believe we become what we think about. Why don't you just suspend disbelief? If you're going to doubt anything, doubt your doubts. I like that. Doubt your doubts. Never heard this, that before. This material has changed. I've seen it change so many people's lives. Mm -hmm. It's just it's as obvious as looking at this pen. The problem is that people aren't coachable. That's the main problem. Mm -hmm. They're not coachable. They're, they're not going to ban their own beliefs. Why? Because they're so strong. They think they are, but they're not. They're so used to being themselves. I was very used to being myself. I could justify anything in my life, anything I could justify. 
I could tell you exactly why my life was the way it was. There's always a reason why life is the way it is. And very rare was it ever me. It's my belief system. And I think at the beginning for some, like it could be a painful process. Many, many of us, it's a painful process to come to the realization that, whoa, I actually am like that. Whoa, I have a bad attitude. Whoa, I, you know, I, I am that way. And that takes a lot of courage. But once you get over that, to let go of the old model, like to let go of ideas that don't serve you and make room for new ones, well, that's going to be your greatest challenge. It's, it's the letting go. What, what did um, that one quote said? Uh, people in society have to learn or they learn, unlearn, and then relearn. And as you learn, unlearn, and relearn, then that's how you perpetually start to grow. Everybody wants change, but no one really is is ready to make is it. Is interested in actually making the change? Oh, yeah. I love what you said there. Learn, relearn, and what did you say? What was learn, your Learn, relearn, yeah. learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay. So I just did a call, like in between Believe in this call, I had a coaching session with some of the clients that are in OSAD that work with me on brand and marketing stuff. And there was some lots of, there's always lots of questions about a variety of things, but today was the theme was really like social media that kept coming up and people wanting to conquer it at least, you know, like get in the habit of posting and that kind of thing. And one woman in particular said, I keep, I keep, it sucks me back into the old when I post or when I write my posts. And I was like, what an interesting thing. I can totally relate to that feeling. I know exactly what she's saying. And it reminded me of us always needing to be beginners so it's like maybe you need to make over that part in the business and you need to just throw away anything you've done and just let it go. Be like, thanks, that was great. You helped me get here, but now it's time to create something new and adopt that beginner's mindset and just start fresh, even though it feels like you've been going at it for a while. I think she said she'd been in the industry seven, eight years and what she's been doing, which is it's a good amount of time. She's got some you know, momentum and she's made some waves and traction in her in her way. And I love that because we, it, even in the big, at every stage of business and growth, you're always letting go. Like she's seven years down the road needing to let go of something to reestablish it, to reignite her passion and her energy, right? It's like it never ends. This journey never ends. Like even when you hit certain goals, you know, there's just going to be another goal that needs to come after it. <laughs> like, and we just all have to fall in love with the process and the journey of this stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you know, I, I'll ask a lot of people uh, this question where I say, um, if I if I could, ma if this was a magic wand and I could wave this wand and you could have your goal, and I just bop you on the nose, boop, I just beep, bop you on your goal like that, you'd have your goal. Would you let me bop you on the nose? And most people say yes. I say, okay, let's say I hit you on the nose and you start earning a hundred thousand dollars a month. Would you let me knock you on the nose? No, Dave, I don't think I would, because that actually sounds kind of boring. Well, that's, there you go. That's the purpose I think, of it. Yeah, I think like, and getting something for nothing doesn't feel good. Like, it feels so good to earn it. It really does. Like, it just feels so good to know, like, I earned that 100000 a month. You know, like, I worked for it. I learned, I did all the, I went through all the phases of the growth. Like, that's what I care about. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting because yeah. as you're going towards the goal, you want it so bad. And yet you almost get so frustrated by not having it. But at the same time, it's the growth that does it. Mm -hmm. I have never to this day ever set a goal using these principles and not achieved it. Yeah. It, these principles that I'm sharing with everybody during believe have, have worked 100% of the time for me. Very rare. Did it ever come the way I thought? I couldn't have predicted all the things that would have to change all the realizations about myself, mm -hmm. all, all, you know, all the improvements, the areas I had to improve. That was very fascinating. Mm -hmm. So when I signed up, when I set the goal of earning $100,000 a month, I had no idea what I was getting myself into in, in awareness in honesty in abilities, skill sets, no idea, but that's, that's the fun of it. And then once you get to that goal, then you got to set another one because once you get it, it, it's 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 kind of whatever to be honest yeah it's, it well it doesn't that's it, it is whatever it's just not about that it's not about the money right it's always about the growth yeah, the it's growth. just always about it's never about the getting it's always about the growth always
That's what's motivating and fulfilling, right? The service. As soon as we fall out of that service-based mindset, it, everything just gets a lot harder. Slows down. Here's a way to take all pressure off yourself. Just quit putting it on yourself, first of all. But just put all the energy on everyone else that you're serving. And it just takes the pressure off. So showing up on lives or posting on social, like the things we were talking about today, or running workshops or doing any of the things that you're doing in your world. It's just about the service of others. It just takes the pressure off. 100%. So what happens to a person when they have more belief in themselves? Their life will start to improve. It's just that simple. You know, once I started to get more belief in myself and in, in the power of my own mind, my life began to improve. Now, I remember I was, um, it was in uh, September 2017 and I, I was at a consultant uh, event and I used to be a consultant with, uh, with Bob Proctor. And I remember it was my first one ever. I, I never knew that was a part of the, the deal when I enrolled in that. And I went to the event and I was sitting in the very back, as was my habit. And I noticed that there was two tables at the front. There was 13 people and these people got a lot of attention. And then as the week went on, I started to find out that they um, got to go for supper with them before. And at that time, just being around Bob was my sole motive in life, to be honest. It, 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 it was everything once I realized I could. Mm -hmm. And I remember every day I would sit with the same group at the same table. And on the third day, I asked them, I said, I said, do you guys, did you guys know about this, this, inner circle table up at the front of, 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 of the room. And they're like, yeah. And I said, how long have you known about it? And one guy was doing it for like two years at that time or something. <clears throat> and he said, well, I've, I've known about it for a couple of years. I said, well, then why the hell are you sitting back here? I said, you've known about this for two years and you're still sitting back here. I said, I will never sit with you guys again, ever. <laughs> Did you, you actually say that? Me. Did you actually say that to those guys? Oh yeah. <laughs> We'll never be with you guys again. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, that's pretty honest. That's pretty honest. Yeah, and they direct. got to go for lunch with him. They left for an entire day with him. Right. I was like, God, like, do you have any idea what you're missing out on? I remember mm -hmm. when he passed away, um, uh, Arash did a call with his team and he said, you guys missed out. Never took advantage of him when he was here. Never did what he said. I always did what he said. I trusted him 100%. I didn't want the life I had. I wanted a way better one. I want an opulent one. I want a life full of abundance and prosperity and service and, and um, joy and peace of mind and, mm -hmm. and, and money and travel and, and teamwork and getting behind a real something that I felt really mattered. And I didn't want what I had. So I did everything he said because he told me he would help me get it. And he did. Do you know that everything he ever told me became true in the end? And even when my existing paradigm and my existing identity wanted to fight against it, mm -hmm. I would always suspend that belief. I'd suspend that belief. Mm -hmm. And I always do what he said. And it worked every time. Every time it works. Because the universe operates by law. You see, this isn't, this isn't rocket science. Change your thinking, you change your life. Change your belief system, you change your life. And to change your belief system, I will tell you here and now, I've never met. I remember I asked Bob once, said, Bob, have you ever met a person that could change their paradigm on their own? He said, David, in 60 years of doing this, I've never met one person that's ever been able to do it on their own. He said, the paradigm's too strong. Do you know that your paradigm does all your thinking for you? Become scared, freaky aware of that lately. It does all your thinking. It also does all your, it's your belief system. It's an mm -hmm. ism. It's a freaky awareness when you have it because you suddenly realize there's just something in there just literally controlling you. And I think the deeper you go, you can start to, you start to feel like the real you and then this thing you're up against, kind of like a little battle royale every now and then. That's yeah. where I find like the inner self-talk to be really powerful. It's like, who is that? What is that? You hear these things like you, you negative spirals may go off in your mind. That happens to me sometimes. Or it's like, you can't do it. This is bad. Blah, blah, blah. Like crap. And you're like, no. No. 
Like you literally have to say no, <laughs> no to yourself. Like there's literally something in there trying to ruin something. It's really, really weird. It's really weird. It's super weird and freaky. I don't know. I did. I think we'll be battling with it forever. But I think um, the more awareness you have around it, the more you can start to choose again. You know, Kaylee and I were talking about that on the call on Tuesday because her son has been sick for the last few months. And she said, yeah, the bad bad ideas will come in, but you can stop and choose again, right? You can yeah. change the perception amazing. of the situation. Yeah, it is amazing. So like things will kind of hit the skids, right? You know, it's not always perfect as much as we would love things to be perfect things are rarely perfect and they rarely go perfect like we're come up we come up against adversity all the time how do you return to belief when the fear and the inner talk is really kicking into gear for you what do you do if things aren't going my way the first thing i do is i check my thinking i um i've gotten into the habit of always looking at my side of the street first mm -hmm. so is this problem in me or is it outside of me? I'll always check the thinking first because it's my thinking that's creating my reality. So I got to look at myself first. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I do is I go back to the image. I go back to the image. So I had a member on our team, Kendall, messaged me a couple of weeks ago that she was afraid of something. And all I responded back to her was, I said, just go write out your self-image script. Like, get your mind off the fearful thoughts. Mm -hmm. Get your mind back on things that you want. Could it be that simple? <laughs> I'm not telling you, could it be? It is. It's your thinking that controls your feelings. It's your thinking that controls your vibration. It's also your vibration controls what you attract. Stop holding the outside world responsible for your life. You know, we'll have people here, we'll have consultants here at Conway Consulting that are all experiencing different things. We're all doing the same business, same lead, same process, same team. Everything's the same. All different results. It's very interesting. Some of them are struggling with this. Another one isn't. Some of them isn't struggling with that. And this other, this person is. But to start to look inside, I, I said on session one that the, the key to becoming free is responsibility. Always look inside first and then get your mind back on what you want. Floss it out. Floss it out, baby. I'm telling you guys, it does. It flosses out the crap. Like when the crap comes in, you have to get rid of it. You have to get Every rid day. of it. And you have to just commit to that. Don't just sink into the crap. Get rid of it because you can get rid of it. You have the power to be your own hero. Like you said, you have the power to be your own best friend. You can take control of your life mm -hmm. don't let life control you you control it you can do it floss it out baby that's right and you should just floss too normally like that that also helps mm -hmm. <laughs> just keeping the pearly whites pearly right dave yeah so another thing that i also find comes up um all the time like i'm sure you see it in your your calls too i see it on my calls with the clients as well but fear of criticism is just like the real pandemic <laughs> like people have relentless oral hygiene, baby. <laughs> um, that was funny, Kaylee. Um, but people have just this like relentless fear of criticism. It's just like never ending and it always comes up and um, people are always concerned about what they'll think of them and, and how they how they appear to others. Like it's always perception, right? Um, you, in my opinion, have had next to no fear of criticism in my experience with you, you probably have had it, I'm sure, at some degree. But I really don't, I really feel that this is something you have either never had or conquered it. So hoping you'll share some of your secrets about how you've done that. I think I was born with that. So I've never That's really. Probably why I never had it. <laughs> I've never really given a rip what other people think. Yeah. Um, you know, when I originally, we immigrated from Ireland to Canada. So when I first came over to Canada, I uh, had an accent and people would, you know, kids, kids can be cruel and they'd say, go, go back to Ireland and stuff. And, uh, you know, there's always a bully around. There's always some kind of a bully. So mm -hmm. whenever anybody bullied me, I just beat them up. <laughs> That's what I did. 
proper. Just, just the cops, hey? That's yeah, sure. I'd hit them with a stick or a whatever the hell. I'd get a hockey stick and hit them and stuff. That's what I thought mm -hmm. hockey sticks were for. I thought they're just for <laughs> hitting people. The, it's, just like, it's just like you are the padding and you have the stick. It was just for beating up bullies. No, oh, I had no padding. I just hit them with a stick. <laughs> You know, so I, I I never I never had a back down thing like and I know I've never suffered with that. So I can't necessarily relate to that. I can understand and I can help people overcome it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the fear of criticism is a really prevalent one. And I think it's because we compare we we care what other people think. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I heard a saying once said, I'm not who I think I am. I'm not who you think I am. I am who I think you think I am. And. You got to you got to build you got to build up your I don't give an F muscle like you got to get over yourself and you got to get over the opinions of others. Opinions are everywhere. That's what an opinion is. An opinion is a projected belief. That's what it is. And everyone's walking around projecting their beliefs on everybody. And if you're ignorant, it'll go right into your sub as most do. So you got you got to just say, I don't care what people think about me. Mm -hmm. I really don't care. I'm, I'm going to step out. I'm going to live my life on my terms. And the better you can get at that, the freer you'll, you'll become. And I'm going to be going into fears too. On I'll be going into this on uh, yeah, session tomorrow. five as well. Yeah, faith yeah. versus fear. You, yeah. you got to get over other people. Honestly, you're. I'll guarantee you, you are too subject to the opinions of ignorant people. Look at their results. Look at their results. Do they have what you want? Do they have what you want? Do they have money? Do they have peace of mind? Do they have good relationships? Do they have health? People are walking around giving their opinions all the time. Pay close attention to the results. By your fruits, you'll know them. And it's not just other people. It's also your own fruits. Whatever you're manifesting in your life, by your fruits, you'll know them. What's the them? The beliefs. Your own. Your own beliefs. Mm. So you're born that way is a real blessing so you're saying it's affirm the opposite you got to make a firm decision that you do not care what other people think just accept that accept the new belief just accept it don't even affirm the damn thing just accept what i'm saying is true people think it's a long process to change a belief system sometimes it is but sometimes you can just make the decision yeah yeah, you're totally right. And sometimes when you become aware of a, a fear, it can set you free from it. It's really strange. This happened, this happened to me a couple of times this year when I suddenly realized, oh, I have this. I have this particular fear in this particular circumstance. And once I just realized it, I just could choose again. Yeah, I had fear of criticism and with a certain group of people. That yeah. was what it was. And when yeah. I was aware of it, Yep. I was able to change my perception of it. Yep. Your family, your your family, your yeah. your peers, uh, a friend group, uh, the people at work. Exactly. Because you'll find that the fears are actually quite specific sometimes in nature where it's like they apply in certain ways. And, you know, like you don't care what the stranger thinks of you, <laughs> but you might care of what your childhood friend thinks of you. You might care about what your family thinks of you. And it's like, how can you step out and be different when it's quite different from the environment you grew up in? And I think that's where we come up against these things. So it's the, just hard, the, hard, the hardest area you'll probably have to overcome the fear of criticism is with your family and your close peer groups. Mm -hmm. Because they're a manifestation of the paradigm. That's where you got your paradigm from. <clears throat> so when you step out and you yeah. start talking different things and, and going after different things and spending your time and your money differently and yeah. communicating differently and maybe some conversations that you used to get involved with all the time were uh, very common and now you don't want to engage in those conversations. Maybe you've, maybe you've stopped engaging in gossip. Maybe your family gossips a lot. You know, all kinds of stuff like that. How they relate to each other, right? Because mm -hmm. mutual suffering is a stimulant of the mind. So when it comes to fear of criticism, when you start to step out, then you might they might not relate to you anymore and that can be scary and for most it gets them you see the fear criticism is interesting because the fear criticism can get you before you start but also it gets a lot after they start 
it's like, you know, when you're going up the stairs, if you, cold, you turn out the lights in the basement and you run up the stairs, like, like you know, a little, you grab your ankles or someone. You're running <laughs> That's what it's like, because yeah. I, I've seen a lot of people, you know, my, for our first three webinars we did, no one came. It was just me doing them and I still did them. And people said, oh, <clears throat> that's really sad. You know, no one came to your webinar. I said, not for me. I said, it's the greatest webinar of all time. I said, no one got to experience it but me. Someone's life was changed. <laughs> it just wasn't yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's just the awareness. It's just, it always comes down to just the awareness of the things. It's like, yeah, we're going to talk about, we're talking about fear, but like really consider it in your own life. You know, like where are the fears showing up? Like, where are they really showing up and how can you just become aware of it and then start to choose again? Be conscious, conscious about it. It's like, oh, I have this fear. Oh. But can I just look at the same situation and choose again? Yeah, I, I, can. Have, I have been doing fear inventories for 17 years. 17 years of my life, I do an inventory every year on fear. And whenever anything isn't going well, I'll do an inventory on it too. I'm always on guard for the fear because fear is a corroding thread. It weaves its way right into your life. You don't even know what's in there. Every year I do them. What am I afraid of? Why am I afraid of it? What am I afraid to lose? Got to keep a close eye on that stuff. Yeah. Even when you think you've conquered it, it just creeps right in. Oh, yeah. Like powerful. Don't around. underestimate the dark side. It got, <laughs> uh, it got Anakin Skywalker. It'll get I you. Know. Freaking Annie. Why? Why? Why did he go that way? Okay. Well, there's a couple questions that actually came in uh, during the event. So I'm going to we'll get those out, of, out on the table. So the first was, and it kind of fits into what we're talking about. This was from Sarah Doyle today. Uh, she says, how do you treat people nicely while protecting your environment? Well, you should be kind to people if you can. But don't allow yourself to be a punching bag. Why, why, would, you, why would you be around people that don't treat you well? And I don't care who they are. Mm. Like your standards have to go across the board. It doesn't matter. You see, this is this is one of the delusions of the world. They think just because it's a family member, they have to tolerate that. What a load of crap. How many ladies are in abusive relationships because they think that madness? And men too. You don't have to tolerate that. You see, people are people. And they have to be put into their right place as people. And that's it. Don't tolerate abuse from anybody or any any uh, at anyone any time. So it's not a matter of being nice or kind to those people. You got abusive people in your life, get away from them. Mm -hmm. But just make sure you look at your own side of the street because if you're attracting people like that, there might be some sort of self worth condition in you. Just do what I said before. Always look at your side of the street. Mm -hmm. Get your brooms out, everybody. Yeah, be brooms kind to everybody. You know, yeah. I, I think I think Jesus asked too much when he asked us to love everybody. I don't think that's even possible. Yeah. It must be. I think it was for him. That's it's a tall order. This question came in from Tony Bertuzzi. He says, and this is a bit of a longer one, Dave. It says, Dave, when you say empty the old Don Dave Conway before bed, do you visualize the new habits you're trying to create and affirm those habits? Or do you visualize yourself being an empty vessel before sleep and then filling your mind with the new version of Dave Conway? Yeah, so when I go to bed at night now, my ritual is uh, I, I just sort of enter into the spirit of, of the universe. I find that it's, it's a really lovely, lovely energy. And, and then when I wake up in the morning, I make a decision of the person I want to be. So if you can just relax before bed, let go of your goals, just let them go. Fill your mind with some really wonderful thoughts. And then the morning when you wake up, pump the new idea into your head. But when I started to do it, when I started to change my identity, 
I had to, I just emptied out. I emptied everything out. There was no Dave Conway because I found that the, I find that the universe has better plan than me anyway. Infinite intelligence has better stuff in store for me anyway. So it's like, we set on the state of grace today. I think grace is the key grace to get closer to that connection. Everything flows out of that connection. You can even get to the place where your, your imagination is actually being controlled by infinite intelligence. Well, it's it is infinite it? intelligence. But infinite intelligence is controlling it, whether we like it or not, is it not? Or the paradigm is. Or the paradigm is. You know, I have a theory. If mm -hmm. you're interested in hearing my theory. Yeah. So um I like to kind of like, as Scott Edwards said on one of the lives he did with you, he said he likes to play with this information sometimes. And I'm kind of like him. I kind of like to play with these ideas sometimes and just have a little bit of fun. And when I fall asleep and I've been kind of like uh, kind of just trying to bring more awareness to that state between sleep and, and awake, um, just to kind of like get to understand the process better, which is weird, but it it is kind of fun. And what I've come to this conclusion of is that the mind I work in, where I like the mind I'm using right now, the mind I take notes with, the mind I'm on our team calls with is like my, I'm a dancer, came from the dance world, is like my on stage. And then when it's time to go to sleep, I kind of like pull the curtains open and then I go backstage. And there's almost like this, like kind of like a, if any like stranger things, people are in the house, like you kind of like a, this like membrane kind of thing. See, I'm a little wild here. So I go through the back, open the curtain, I go through like the backstage and then things get a lot more interesting. And that's actually where I find like the theater is, the, the imagery happens. Like in, the, in my onstage brain, I don't see images. I don't. I, maybe I have to think about this more or look, play around a bit more. But I don't see images in my onstage brain. But when I go backstage, I see them. I see our house that we're building. I see trips I want to go on. I see images of what I want the business to become. I see all kinds of things backstage where it's not like front center when I'm on stage. And so I kind of like play around with this, um, this idea. This, you guys can do this too at home. Like when you're going to bed tonight, when you're going to sleep tonight, is just be like, because I have this you know, problem sometimes where I can really get going and start planning my day, like to the point where I'm actually working in my head before I'm going to sleep. That's got to stop. I'll actually tell myself, stop, I'll just be like, stop, yeah. stop. It's not time for that. And then I want to go into this like backstage area where it's kind of like fun party time where the images are, where it's just a little bit more creative and free. And I guess maybe everyone has their own way of contextualizing this for themselves. But what I really think is happening is it's basically just me moving from the conscious into the subconscious. Yeah, I was I have a suspicion that sleeping is the real life. And when we're awake, it's that's the fake. <laughs> well, I hope that's not totally accurate because I have some scary dreams. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out maybe one day, but hopefully not today. Anyways, that's how I like to think about it on stage and backstage. So I love it. you guys can have some fun with that later if you're into it. <laughs> okay. So this is a good question, Dave. So like what happens or what causes us not to benefit from some of the training and information you've been sharing this week? In action. In action. Mm -hmm. Yep. You see, we all have a memory and the memory will going to get you to think that, you know, and let's say, let's say you, you've read The Magic of Thinking Big, let's say. And you say, oh, I know that book. Do you really? Do you really? Have you ever experienced it? And the mind will, the mind, this information that I'm sharing this week is this in this seminar is very enjoyable. It's fascinating stuff. But what are you doing with it? Because the truth is, if you're going to achieve success in your life, you've got to learn to give on the same frequency that you want to receive, but the giving comes first. So a lot of people sit at home, just not really helping anyone, not improving themselves. And they think just by visualizing that they're going to get it. Well, that's not really how it works. Mm. You gotta, you gotta implement it. You gotta, you, what are you doing with it? You gotta use it. You gotta start to release energy 
that's in harmony with the receiving of your goal. Love that. Totally. 100%. Give on the frequency of the level that you want to receive. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Bob used to say at the seminars all the time, um, like if like because they don't usually have some type of charity, like unstoppable foundation to usually be there. And they'd be like, write down an amount and then add like a thousand dollars or something. <laughs> like he was always like pushing people in their ability to give. You gotta give out of your comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah, it was giving out of your comfort mm -hmm. zone. It's the key to it's the key to growth. Yes. So when it comes to the giving, like is that like the giving of your like giving of money, it can, be, it can apply to money, like giving money out, I guess. But is it more than just that? Is it the giving of your knowledge, service, time? Like where does the giving expand to? Well, giving is, is uh, the most psychologically rewarding thing you could ever do. So you'll get psychic income from giving. But anybody can start to increase whatever, wherever you are, start to up your game in the quality of the things that you give. Mm. You know, whether it's mm -hmm. doing the dishes at home, whether it's serving your clients, whether it's in sales, whatever it is, start to improve on, on how you give. Come up with ideas. Get creative with ideas. How can I serve better? How can I serve? How can I release more energy? And you'll find that it starts to come back. Totally. I know what you mean by the releasing of energy because even because we never get paid from people, we get paid through them, right? We never expect to get right from the exact source. Like it's just the release of the energy and then it just like finds its way back. Just yeah, you, that's right. You don't get paid from people, you get paid through them. Mm -hmm. So as you start to understand that, you know, as I started doing, I used to do a lot, I've done thousands of sales presentations. Mm hmm and I always found that in the, in the early years when I was more of an amateur, I was a little more into the getting, eh? So I was, I was always trying to like make the sale. And then what I learned was that's actually not what I'm doing here. What I'm, what I'm really doing is I'm forming a composite with this person. I'm serving this person mm -hmm. and I'm creating an environment with me and this person that allows them to grow into and become whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And once I started to get into the giving, once I started to get into the service, like, man, my income, my income just went up and up and up and up. And it continues to go up to this day. Money is energy. Based on the service rendered. If you receive money through, that you didn't earn, it'll come in the form of debt or an inheritance. You want to start to earn your money, provide service for it. Yep feel better. I love it. Well, as we bring this in for our landing, Dave, what do you think is the most important thing you've said all week? Mentorship. Look, coming on, coming to this seminar with me, I hope that it's helped you. But to come for these four or five sessions, six sessions, and then just go off back to your old world, I suspect you're in an environment I suspect that the results you're getting are, con are, are conducive with the environment that you're in. You have to change your environment. You have to change where you get information. You have to change where you're receiving direction, the opinions that are floating around in the environment that you're in. Because every environment has opinions in it. You got to get a mentor. My life has never changed. Never. Never changed until I got a mentor to help me change it. Every change I've ever made in my life has come because somebody has helped me do it. Same. Get a mentor. Get a mentor. Don't BS yourself. I love it. Well, thanks, Dave. Thanks for being here. Like I said, you've been hard hard one to pin down the last you week. Found me. You found me. So I felt like I finally did it, you guys. Finally nailed him to his chair and got him to talk to us. So that's great. So thanks for doing this, Dave. And keep an eye out. We have one more session tomorrow, faith versus fear, and we have leverage your sex energy on Saturday, but you have to have booked in your 15 minute laser session in order to get into that call. So make sure you've done that and we'll see you on Friday and we'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.